There you are, Eleanor. Kamoana's worried about you. You actually came looking for me? Can't say no to a crying child. Ah, uh, indeed. She may be a Therian now, but deep down, she's still a lonely little girl. That's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all. Wretched demons and Therians, even the Malachim who I'd only thought of as tools, they all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what demon blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say, I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. I think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamoana I'm all right. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. <sighs> Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamoana and Lafisat would worry. That's all. I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding, until now. I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafiset and bring him to Abbey headquarters. So vital was the mission, I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You were gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Laffy said. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorius? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorius. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision, so... I will help you protect the Therians... ...until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of, and to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness. Don't equate us. To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You never make things simple, do you? You should be glad I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. Yes, yes. So, I think our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor, so who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway, Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. 
there's something I want to try out. All right, let's go. Laffy said, I must offer you an apology. What for? For spying. I was plotting to take you back to the Abbey. I am truly sorry. It was your mission, wasn't it? Somehow I think I always knew. You... you did? Call it a hunch. Besides, Velvet was really suspicious of you. Whenever you feel you're doing something wrong, you start to sweat a lot. It seemed odd. How long have you known? Ever since you became a vessel for me. I think Velvet knew too. <sighs> That's quite a shock. I failed completely in my role as a spy. It's pathetic. Shameful, really. Well, I think it says something good about you. Huh? Someone who can't lie well seems like a better person than someone who has an easy time of it. Thank you, Laffy said. I think you're the better person here. I wouldn't go that far. Hmm? What are you doing here, Bianfu? I was hoping you'd let me join in! We're in the middle of something important. Please leave us be for now. I'll be quiet! Just let me hang around, alright? Afraid not. Bien! <laughs> Madame Eleanor is a mealy head! She's a what? Laffy said. Thank you. I hope we can stay friends. I hope so too, Eleanor. We're here. What now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still... That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. 
Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest to goodness lead. Or dishonest to badness in our case. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Oracalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Oracalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself, but I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of Oracalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana's getting weird! <laughs> All right, so our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sensed Give the... Give Tabitha our thanks. It's looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back. 
But only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the underworld. That sounds terrible. But at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. Dragon. <gasps> That's gotta be the demon Tabitha wanted us to know about. It's flying free, but could it still be a Therian? I just felt an Earth Pulse point. It's that way, somewhere near the top of that mountain. Let's check it out.
Yeah, I can really feel the Earth pulse now. It's up above. Guess we're in for some mountain climbing then. No barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. Only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon? Can't wait to take a good look around. Whoa, now that's what I call a view. I agree that it's beautiful, but don't leap about so much. You'll fall. Hmm. I can sense many earth pulses under this place. I figured you'd notice that. An intricate web of earth pulses crisscrosses the land under the Aldina Plains. Mountains like these would normally take tens of thousands of years to form, but these popped up in about a millennia. So the Earth Pulses have affected the land? Exactly. Long ago, people wielded arts that allowed them to manipulate the Earth Pulses and control the very land itself. How could arts like that exist? Perhaps they pushed against key points on the Earth Pulses? Like how acupressure can improve a person's blood flow. That's a rather forced comparison. But you may be right. Either way, those arts have been lost for eons. I'm impressed, Aizen. You know a lot about everything. Not at all. There's so much I don't know. For example, the name of these flowers. That's why I travel. To learn. Aldina alabaster grass. That's the name of this flower? Yes. A long time ago, my brother showed me a picture of it in one of his books. They're fragile flowers. They die quickly on their own. But if enough of them gather together, they can survive. Fields of them form beautiful white carpets of flowers. In some cultures, they symbolize kinship. The bonds between people. Kinship? Huh. I'll remember that. You and your brother taught me something new today. I'll never forget either.
at that, but it met their horns. Where did the d I couldn't tell you. I hope the come to think of it. The v if you're going to. Savid. Well, hello, sailor. Are you waiting for someone? Nope. Just saying a prayer for someone. Someone? Let's go. Clearly, there aren't any blood wings here. And she's going to leave? I'm right here. Everybody has times they need to be alone. Fee. Right. Coming. What do you think he was praying about? Well, for one thing, he was drinking a bottle of Thorny Forest. Oh my! The drink you share with your special someone when you're going to be married for life! How romantic! But getting your hands on that stuff is no small feat. I can only hope I'll get a chance to taste it someday. That must have had an important meaning for Savid. That's why you left him alone. Don't read too much into it. You're Velvet, right? Huh, you must be the one who's seen the demon we're after. We saw a big snake-looking dragon fly over on the way here. Is that what you saw too? Yes, that's the one. It nests at the top of the mountain in Aldina Plains. We went to look ourselves. No dragon. It only returns to its nest on rainy days. Rainy days, you say? Oh, just look at 
did what you went and made the weather gods do. This doesn't bode well. Not at all. Thanks. We'll give it another shot. Save it, cats. All the better, Meow. I've just stumbled upon a perfectly nifty piece of stone just for you. What's it for? <gasps> That's not a geoboard, is it? Bingo! I dug it out of some ruins, Meow. They were made by Norman Meowney years ago for surfing along Earth pulses, but I can't use it, so I figured I'd pawn it off on someone else who could, Meow. Wait, Norman made this? That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Don't be so mean! We're capable of exceptional things! Uh, sometimes. When a Norman speaks their own name, the board springs to life! And whisks its masters away at top speed! They'll even plow right through weak demons! You can say it's our masterwork, even if we sort of stumbled on it by accident. Huh. Well, then I apologize. So we can ride this as long as we have Bienpu with us, right? Well, kind of. Do you have to use your true name to activate it? Not my true name, no. My Norman name. Wouldn't that just be Bienpu? No. Norman have a separate name that goes something like Norman so-and-so. It's almost more a title than a name. Often the name has something to do with what they're good at. Something like Attack, or Chain, or Aqua. Right. You could say names like Bienfu and Grimoire are more like stage names. I actually don't know Bienfu's Norman name, but I can't wait to find out. What is your name, Bienfu? Uh... Come on out with it. We're in a hurry. Norman Brave. Whoa, look at that! Wait, Bienfu. <laughs> Your Norman name is Brave? <laughs> that is so deliciously absurd! Why do you think I've never told you before, <laughs> At least the board works, Meow. And if we get on this board, it'll move us around? Well, about that. The board propels itself by pushing against Earth Pulse flows. To do that, the board needs information on the flows. But this one here's a completely blank slate, Meow. First, you need to find the geo trees in each area. They serve as a conduit between the surface land and the Earth Pulses, Meow. Once you've actually located a geo tree, you can record that area's Earth Pulse data into your geo board, Meow. Got it. This area's geo tree is right over there, Meow. All right then. So long as we find more geo trees. We'll be able to use the geoboard to travel much more quickly. looks so deadly. And just check out how much malevolence it's putting out. Which means it's not a Therian. Let's retreat. We've got no reason to pick a fight with something we can't handle. I do. Oh, you're up for it? What? 
What are you doing? She's right. Fighting this creature is a good way to end up dead. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, no turning back now. Damn it, this wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, but training like this doesn't come around every day. Be on your guard. One wrong move and you're done for. I know. That's the fun part. This one definitely puts up a better fight than your average demon. Is there any hope of actually defeating this thing? I'll do whatever it takes. That's my way. Zafin! Yeah. I see you're out for blood, as usual. You knew, didn't you, Isaac? Out of my way. What? Are you protecting the dragon? She's not a dragon! Huh? Away. <sighs> that hurts, babe. And here we hadn't seen each other in so long. Hold it. Is that dragon someone you knew? I told you, she's not a dragon. Check out my pecs, and the dragon have some kind of close ties. Did I hear you right? We're talking about a dragon here. I know what I said. But how could that be? When Malakim are tainted by malevolence, a dragon is what ultimately results. So you're saying that dragon was a Moloch Zavid once now? She must be who he was praying for back in town. Yeah, most likely. But do Malakim put out malevolence like humans do? No. Not by themselves, they don't. But if one remains in contact with humans or demons who do, it will eventually taint her, and she will become a dragon. What about you, kiddo? You feel anything weird after you got thrown into the Earth Pulse at the Empyrean's throne? I did, yeah. Can't say I'm surprised. The air there was thick with malevolence being sent on its way to Enominat. If I'd stayed there, I might be a dragon, too. Is having a vessel not enough to prevent a Moloch from transforming? A vessel can reduce the effect, but not eliminate it. By stripping their Molochim of consciousness, the Abbey Exorcists seem to be able to inhibit the transformation. But nothing in this world is guaranteed. Can a dragon ever be changed back into a Moloch? Nope. Just like with demons, there's no going back. Do they still hold on to some part of who they were? You saw that dragon. What do you think? 
Well, that's... But Zavid still won't kill it. Must be his creed at work. Aizen, listen. Whatever business you and Zavid have with that dragon, I don't care. Do what you have to. But I won't tolerate you getting the rest of us involved in it again. Do I make myself clear? You've got it. Good. Now, let's get back to the Therian hunt. We'll regroup in Titania. If what Aizen said is true, then could I wind up as a dragon someday? Or Aizen too? I don't... I don't know. What's with this crowd? Majalu's troop just put on a real show. Man, it was the best! Her dancing was every bit as great as I'd heard. Wow, the Majalu? Surely you mean Mogilu! Has my time to bask in fame finally come at long last? No, we're talking about Majalu, not Mogilu. You know, Lulu, the famous dancer? She actually goes by the Majestic Lulu, but everyone calls her Majulu. Just watching the beauty of her dance, you can't help but feel like maybe everything's gonna turn out okay in the world. Sounds like a pretty cheerful act she has. Cheerful? This is all a rip-off! She's just trying to pass off as Magilu's menagerie and profit from our good name! What good name? We don't actually perform anything. I was planning on getting started eventually, but now this con artist comes along and ruins everything! I can't just ignore that, you know. <gasps> it's Modulu! You did great today, Modulu. I loved it! Thank you so much! But according to my teacher, I still have a long way to go. I'll work hard to do better next time, so I hope you'll come see me. Modulo's teacher is a dancer named Balta, whose immense talent brought him all the fame in the world. But Balta suffered a tragic injury that took him forever from the stage, and now Modulo was working hard to carry out his dream. Huh. So, you're Modulo then? I am. My teacher and I work really hard to put on performances that'll leave a lasting impact. And I refuse to let anyone call me a phony. Oh? And how do you propose to stop me? Taking it to the stage and seeing which one of us can better hold a crowd? Yes. That's just what I was hoping for. Lulu, don't go around picking petty fights. But sir, this woman, she... You should know better. If you have the energy to spare spitting vitriol at people, you should refocus that anger into moving your body. If you need to express yourself, do it on the stage. Y yes sir. You're right. <sighs> Teacher, is the pain acting up again? It's no matter. What does pain compare to losing the ability to dance? I I'm fine, sir. Good. Then let's head back and practice some more.
He seems strict. He does. But keep in mind that Balta recognized her talent at a young age. He even adopted her so he could pass on everything he knew. He might be strict, but only because he believes in her. You sure know an awful lot about them. I'm sort of a fan of theirs, you could say. A teacher and his student, chasing after the same dream. What a sweet little story they have. That's why I think it's high time for Moggy Lou's Menagerie to put on a show. And for our act, we'll be a comedy duo. Comedy? Where'd you get that idea? You heard me propose a challenge to little Majalu, right? But not one of you knows a single acrobatic trick. Sorry. Don't apologize. You couldn't have seen this coming. Well, you could act like you feel a little bad at least. Now, normally I'd make you guys do something flashy like jump through a ring of fire, but I'll be magnanimous and let you do comedy instead. With comedy, I can take control of the stage and keep things lively. I can feed you the audience on a platter. But... But going on the same stage as Majulu, it's too much to handle. Oh, I can't wait to take her down a peg or two. I'm out. I don't even know why you're bothering. It's hopeless. It's not hopeless! Plus, if we do well, we'll be raking in the dough. What better opportunity do we have to get started than now? After all, people will come thinking we're Majulu's troop. You're sure eager to profit off of her good name. That's exactly the material I want. Keep throwing out such zingers and the audience will be in stitches. I'm not sure I follow, but okay. The only thing getting thrown out is gonna be you. You know, I think you could pull off being the straight man in our act. What? Keep your compliments to yourself. This plan might sound dumb, but more money never hurts. Aizen, not you too. Then it's settled. Now we just need to book ourselves a few gigs. I've got an in with all the stage directors in town. For now, I think everyone should pair up so we can figure out just what sort of comedy chops you all have. Everybody? Even me? Certainly. Each one of you is a part of Moggy Lou's menagerie, after all. I... I'm not so sure about this. Keeping tight circles. A letter. Did you get a reply to that letter you sent? What's it say? What's it say? I know everything that you've done. Repent for your horrendous deeds, you monster. What did you do, Aizen? No idea. There's no sender written on here either. Who would write something so awful? Who cares? If I gave a damn about other people's feelings, I wouldn't be a pirate. I suppose that's true. Forget about it. What's the status of the other stuff? The Palmier made it just fine. But uh, we've run into some troubles finding the Nordals. My deepest apologies. What are Nordals? Nordals used to be given out by Empyrean temples. If you collect a set of four, you'll find happiness. Or oh, so they said. Nowadays, there's only four left. Red, blue, green, and black. Even worse, Nobody hardly knows nothing about them. Dolls of the Empyreans. Do you think they're like that one we saw of Aminoch in that shop in Isolt? Kind of. But these are less gloomy looking and more, uh... Hmm. How can I describe it? Something like a quiet radiance? A quiet radiance? <laughs> That's perfect! I... think I get it. I'd never have pegged you as a collector of religious claptrap, Aizen. Think they'll help keep the Reaper away? Probably not. But in the off chance they actually work, they'll keep her safe. Huh. Hey, that letter Aizen sent off earlier was addressed to a woman, wasn't it? <laughs> Our little Luffy said is growing up. N no I wasn't implying she was his girlfriend. Her writing just seemed more mature, and... It's nothing like that. She's my younger sister. 
I didn't know you had a sister. She's the only family I have left. She and I live apart for various reasons. I'm guessing your death curse is one of them, huh? Mogilu! Hmm. So that's why. I'd be happy to help you look for those dolls, Aizen. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, then. Thanks. I saw Benwick and the other crew members get into a serious fight over whether cats or dogs were better. comedy act into tonight's show I'm still breaking in my new partner but I can carry the act I'd appreciate you squeezing us in for you Maggie dear I'll do it as a personal favor but you get 200 flat no expenses no per diem oh come on don't be so stingy it gets worse our headliner is doubling up after and the opener flubbed their lines and lost us minutes playing deuce for a cold house well all right them's the breaks what the hell are you even saying? I'm saying we're going on, and you're my straight man. What? You're serious? I'll take care of the actual funny bits. Just act like you always do and we'll be fine. Bonus points if you toss the men in the audience a glare of contempt every now and then. Just trust me. Oh, hold on. This is all happening so fast. I'm not sure I'm ready for... You'd better get ready, because the curtain's going up. Your lovely comedians for today! Magic Kazam! We're still new to the comedy business, but we'll do our best to give you a memorable show! Now, I'm Moggy, the bright, beaming one in the pair, while my moody little partner here is... <laughs> hey, what's wrong, Belle? Everything okay? You need to put some energy into this, or we're in trouble! Come on! If you've got one redeeming feature, it's your moxie! That might be, but this is different. I can see you're going through something right now. All right, let's take a deep breath together. <laughs> Excuse us for just one moment. Velvet, what are you doing? We're losing the audience. I, I can't help it. They've never talked in front of such a big crowd before. Wait, don't tell me you've got stage fright. So what if I do? That's so unlike you. Just pretend that you're fighting some nasty exorcist and give it some gusto. Easy for you to say. I'm embarrassed out here. Don't be such a girl! I am a girl! That's it! Just do that, but project your voice! I can't, and I don't want to. You're a comedian, you have to! Where's your passion for your newfound art? I'm not one, and I've never had any. No, I can see it within you, deep down, the burning passion of a true artist at heart! I've had enough! I can't do this with you! <laughs> Sorry, folks, show's over! Well, you've certainly shown me something new. A comedy team that just stands on stage whispering to each other. We're going for a brand new comedic style. So, <laughs> what did you think? <sighs> Don't quit your day job. That's what I thought. Ah, now she plays the straight man. 